Okay, so this would be Intro to Accounting, Part 4, and we're going to be looking at closing procedures. So as I said in the beginning of the last PowerPoint, there's nine steps to the accounting cycle. We did steps one through seven up until this point, because the last thing I went over was journalizing and posting adjusted entries. Now we're going to do steps eight and nine, which is to journalize and post closing entries, and step nine, preparing the post-closing trial balance. So just as a recap to adjusting entries, remember, daily business transactions have been recorded and financial reports have been prepared. We inputted all our adjustments, right? The final reports will give an idea of where the business stands. Okay, I'm sorry. So at this point, adjustments have not been recorded into the journal or posted, and therefore you will. And then the books will be now up to date and ready for the next accounting cycle, meaning the next fiscal year. And then this is what the journal entries look like for that Mel's computer service that I use as an example. And we did supplies, prepaid expenses, um, depreciation, and accrued salaries. Now we're going to look at closing entries. So just to go back here, we're at the end. We've done all our transactions for the month of May. In the last day of May, we're going to do our adjusting entries. We're going to skip a line, and then we're going to write closing entries here. No descriptions needed, and you're going to do the following four steps. Before I get into the steps, uh, journalizing and posting to closing entries, next period transactions are made easier by what's called a closing procedure. Closing is intended to close off revenue, expense, and withdrawal accounts, which are considered nominal or temporary. And then by putting their balances, whatever's left, into the capital account. Accounts have two classifications, temporary or permanent, or temporary are also called nominal accounts, and permanent accounts are also called real accounts. So recall from my very first video, there was an expanded accounting equation, and that's assets equals liability plus owner equity, and owner equity encompasses capital, that represents what the owner's worth is. From that account, you would subtract withdrawals. This is why I have it in red. You would add any revenues. That's why I have it in green. And you would subtract any expenses. And you would see that in the fundamental um, financial statements. As I said, you have the income statement or profit and loss, and that's revenue minus expenses. Then you have your statement of owner equity, which is your net income or net loss minus your withdrawals plus the beginning capital would give you your ending capital for whatever period of time that is. And then assets, liability, and capital accounts, they're known as real or permanent accounts, and they're carried over from one accounting period to another. So basically, what are we saying here? So your bank account on December 31st at midnight, if there's $10,000 in your bank account for your business, on January 1st at 12.01 in the morning, you're still going to have $10,000 in that bank account. Or your truck, if you purchased it at $26,000, you are showing that's what it was worth on December 31st, or supplies, or any other account under assets, liability, or capital, like liabilities, your loan payment, or your loan mortgage, whatever it is on December 31st at midnight, it's going to be the same thing on January 1st at 12.01. However, there's temporary accounts at the end of the year that you permanently close, which would be revenue, expenses, and withdrawals, and you put that into your capital. So withdrawals, revenue, and expenses are called nominal or temporary accounts. Their balances are not carried over from one accounting period to another. These accounts are then reset to zero for the new accounting period. You'll start fresh on January 1st with zero dollars in any and all of these accounts because your revenue, would you look at it a yearly basis. This process allows for the accumulation of new data in the new accounting period. Now, I do want to note that um, some businesses do this on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis so they could really look and track net income and owner's worth at the end, you know, the ending capital account on a monthly or quarterly basis. But if they do it, they normally re reverse it back to zero because you only are required to do it on a monthly basis. So at the end of the year, you most definitely have to do this closing procedure. So let's look at the steps to journalize and closing entries. Step one, you would clear out or zero out the revenue balance and transfer it into income summary. Now, income summary is one of those temporary accounts we create just for the closing procedure. Step number two, 
you're going to clear to zero all individual expense balances and transfer them into income summary. Again, income summary is there in your chart of accounts. It's a temporary account that everyone uses during the closing procedure. Step number three, you're going to clear to zero the balance in your income summary and transfer it into capital. Now, if you had net income for the year, that'd be one way and it would increase the value of capital. But if you had net loss for the year, then it would decrease. So step number three is not set in stone and we'll look at that when we get to it. And step number four, you would zero out the balance in withdrawals and transfer it to capital. So let's look at each one of these steps more closely. So for Mel's computer repair service, if you remember at the end of this month, they had $8,000 in computer repair fees. That was their revenue account. So suppose the revenue account had an ending balance of $8,000. Now remember, if we look at it in the T account, what is the normal balance for revenue? It's capital. So I'm sorry, it's credit. So your revenue account should have a credit balance. So at the end of the year, if you, when you want to zero out your revenue, to make something zeroed out, you do the exact opposite, right? So let's look at basic math skills. If I had plus five, meaning $5 in my pocket, how would I get to zero? I would subtract five, meaning I'd spend that $5. So if I had $5 in my pocket and wanted to get to $0, I would go buy myself a little Caesars pizza for $5, correct? So you would subtract five to get to zero. So that's what you're going to do here. We have a credit balance of 8,000. So to zero out our revenue account, we're going to debit it 8,000 because 8,000 minus 8,000 is zero, right? So we're going to debit computer fees, meaning in step one, you will always debit your revenue and credit income summary. Because remember, let me go back. I said step one, you clear to zero, or you could also say zero out your revenue balance and transfer to income summary. So for step one, you will always debit your revenue, whatever the amount is, and credit income summary, whatever that amount is. So if we look at the T account, again, we had started off with a credit balance of 8,000 in our revenue account computer repair fees. And to zero it out, we debited it and now I'll have a balance of zero here. And if I debit, what's the rules of journalizing? If you have a debit, you have to have a credit, correct? So if I debit computer repairs fee for 8,000, that exact amount will be credited to income summary. So if I look at the T account for income summary, it starts off with a credit. And in this case, it's a credit of 8,000. Step number two is you have to zero out each individual expense account. So remember, expense accounts are normal debit accounts. So they'll all be debit balances. Again, how do you zero something out? If I have $5 in my pocket, I got to spend that $5 to get zero, correct? So to zero out each individual balance, I would need to credit it. I would credit that. So let's look at office salaries expense. I would take 650, 650, and 350, and I'd add that all together, and it would give me 1650. So I have $1,650 of office salaries expense for the month of May in this company. To zero it out, I would credit that balance. So I'm gonna credit each individual expense. So salaries expense, I credit it 1,650. Telephone expense, I have 220 on the debit, I'm gonna credit it 220 so I can zero it out. So you see telephone expense here, I credit it $220. Rent expense, I would credit it $400. So we, are, we see here rent expense and it has a credit of 400. So each individual expense, you will credit it to zero them out because they have debit balances. So in order to zero them out, you would credit each one. So in this journal entry, I'm going to credit each individual expense account to get to zero. I would add all of these up and get my total operating expenses. And that is what you debit in your income summary. Okay, so if I take 1650, 250, 220, 500, 480, put it in my calculator, add that all up, it's going to come out to $3,100. And that is what I'm going to debit into my income summary. So for step number two, you always debit income summary for the total operating expenses, and you would credit each individual balance in your expense account. Now, step number three, 
isn't always set in stone, like I said, for one and two. Because one, I said you always debit revenue and credit income summary. And then I said for step two, you always debit income summary and credit all, each individual expense. However, step number three is not set in stone. It depends whether you have a net income or net loss. Okay, so compute the ending balance of the income summary. So in this example, what did I do with income summary so far with steps one and two? I credited income summary 8,000 and then I debited income summary 3,100. If I get the balance, I have an ending balance of a credit 4,900. What is this 4,900 representing? It's representing the net income for this business. So for this month, Mel's Computer Services had 4,900 in, rev in, in net income. It had 8,000 revenue, 3,100 in expenses, and its net income is 4,900. So it's a credit balance because it's a net income for the month, it's be a credit balance and in income summary. And so if I have a credit balance and in income summary, what would I do to zero it out? I would debit it, right? Because I wanna get zero in income summary. Because let me go back to the steps. If we go back to the steps, step number three is clear to zero the balance that is in the income summary and transfer it into capital. So if we go down here to the third journal entry, because I have net income, because I have a credit balance and income summary of 4,900, I am therefore going to debit income summary 4,900. And that net income goes directly into my capital account. So I'm going to credit Mel Glass capital account for 4,900. That makes sense, right? Because if we go back to the rules of journalizing, which was my second um, video in Intro to Accounting, um, you increase capital on the credit side. So I have a net income and I am increasing capital. So I'm going to credit capital 4,900. So let me just read the instruction here. Compute the ending balance of income summary. I did that by taking 8,000, which is a credit, and debiting 3,100, having a credit balance of 4,900. At this point, the income summary represents either, the balance in the income, um, income summary represents either net income or net loss. In this case, it's a net income of 4,900. If there's a net income, the balance would be on the credit side and therefore income summary is debited to zero it out. And that's what we did here. We debited income summary 4,900 and we credited capital, meaning increased capital by 4,900. Just note here, if there is a net loss for your business, the balance would be on the debit side then over here on the T account for income summary. And therefore income summary would be credited to zero it out and you would debit capital, which means you'd be bringing capital down. But that's not the case here. Instead, we have a net income of 4,900 and we're debiting income summary and crediting capital, increasing capital. So again, it's not set in stone step number three. It depends on if you have net income or net loss. But step number four is set in stone because step number four is withdrawals. And we're going to end this with zeroing out our withdrawals and crediting it or lowering, I'm sorry, debiting our uh, income, capital I'm lowering it. So let's look at withdrawals. We have from El Blast a debit of 625, which remember, withdrawals is a normal debit balance. So we would have a debit balance in our withdrawals and we want to zero it out. So therefore we would credit withdrawals to zero it out. So to zero out withdrawals, we would credit it 625 and then I'd have a balance of zero dollars for withdrawals. And that's what we're doing in step number four. We're zeroing out withdrawals and we're putting it into capital. So if we're Crediting withdrawal 625, therefore we would have to debit over here capital. So we're going mill blast capital would be debited 625, which meaning we'll bring it down. Because if you look back at the rules of journalizing, when you debit capital, you're decreasing it. So we'll debit mill blast capital 625 and credit withdrawal 625. Now I don't know if, if anybody picked up on this, but what we're really doing here is the statement of owner equity. We're taking our beginning balance, which is 10,000. We're adding net income and we're subtracting withdrawals. That's why we're debiting capital 625. Our balance to capital would be that ending balance of the statement over equity, which would be your ending capital account for the month. All right, so let's look at step one, two, three, and four in the general journal. So for those students or those business owners who are manually putting their closing entries in, You'll take the month and the last day of the month, you'll always do step one, it's just, which is zeroing out 
your revenue. So you would debit your revenue and credit income summary, the balance. Step number two, you will always debit income summary, the total operating expense balance, and you would credit each individual expense account to zero it out. Step number three, it depends on if you have net income or net loss. In this case, we have net income, so you'd be debiting income summary 4,900 and crediting capital. And then the last step, you always debit capital, meaning bringing it down, whatever the balance is of withdrawals, and you would credit withdrawals to zero it out. This is what it looks like in my general journal. And this would be the last journal entry for that period. Now, let's, this uh, person is closing it on a monthly basis, but most companies don't, and even if you do, you would reverse it in order for you to be able to really permanently zero it all your nominal accounts at the end of the year. So the last statement you would do is prepare your post-closing trial balance. If you took my QBO class, um, you would know that this is the step, last step of the year because it actually permanently zeroes out your um, nominal accounts. So here's our post-closing trial balance. It's the last step in the accounting cycle. It lists only permanent accounts. It aids in checking whether your ledger is in balance. And it's the same procedure that you do for your trial balance. So if you remember what I said with QBO and all of these, QBO doesn't actually have adjusting post-closing trial, I mean, adjusting trial balance or post-closing trial balance. So it would be you just simply taking the time to do a trial balance, to so go to reports and do a trial balance and saving it as post-closing trial balance. So let's look at what the post-closing trial balance looks like for Mel. You're only going to see your permanent or real accounts here. You will not see revenue, expenses, or withdrawals in your post-closing trial balance. So you're going to list, starting with your assets, your liability, which in this case is accounts payable and salaries payable, and your capital, because these are your lasting um, real accounts at the end of the year. Well, this is the at the end of the month. So you would add up all your debits and add all your credits and make sure these two numbers match. Again, you will not see any of your nominal or permanent account, I mean, a temporary accounts. And your nominal and temporary accounts are revenue, expenses, and withdrawal. Just a quick, for those of you who are doing manual accounting, remember we talked about the nine steps. So for step one, your source documents would be like your payroll cards, your receipts, your invoices. Step two would be any of your journalizing or checking your journals. Step four, making sure all your balances in your ledger accounts are correct. That's you would go to your chart of accounts and look at your balances. You'd be able to double click and look at the transaction registers for the individual accounts. Step number four, you would do your trial balance. And then you would do later on with your adjusting, the adjusting trial balance. And then with the closing, you would do your closing, post-closing trial balance. Worksheet, we didn't go over in my class, but that's um, optional. Your financial statements or your income statement or in profit and loss, that's your um, profit and losses in your QuickBooks. And then your statement of owner equity in your balance sheet. If you're taking an accounting 101 course, you, are, you should know how to make these um, financial statements. And then the last three steps would be adjusting entries, closing entries, and your post-closing trial balance. So I would end it here with you, um, but I do want to look at your ledger for those students who have to do ledgers. So when you do your ledgers, remember I was telling you for adjusting, you should at this point have your adjusting added but now you're going to have to add your closing. So let's look at the first closing that I have here in order would be your capital. So when you did steps three and four, you have your um, capital credited because you had a net income and you had your capital debited for withdrawal. So this would be your ending capital balance. And remember what I said, that's actually the same balance that's at the end of your statement of, of owner equity. And uh, the next one would be income summary. You'll now see that in your chart of accounts. And that would be all closing. So you would have closing, closing, closing. And it should be closing at zero. Now notice your withdrawals that are zero too, because we have completed the process of closing. So that means that in your ledger, you should have zero for your withdrawals, your income summary, your revenue, which we see here is zero. Because of the closing procedure we did of debiting it. And then all your expenses should be zero because you credited all of them in step number two. So we see zero 
in all our expenses. That's it. That ends um, video number four. I will do more accounting videos. Just know that um, uh, right now I'm going to focus on the certification exam videos for a little while, and then I'll come back to intro to accounting videos. Thank you for watching.